Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome back to another Supreme Commander Epic. Uh, welcome to all the new subscribers, in fact. Thank you so much for joining us. A lot of people enjoyed the last video, or seemed to, uh, and a lot of people were drawn in purely by the thumbnail, so don't ever let me hear you guys say it doesn't matter, because it does. The thumbnail matters a great deal, and it's the bane of my existence. Because, uh, yeah, it's really not my bag. But those of you who like the picture, thank you very much. I take no credit. With Journey AI, thank you very much. Uh, with Journey, it's not with Journey, mid Journey, even. Uh, yes, the splash screen is back, not by popular demand, but because I've got a small announcement to make. A message coming in from Rowie. You can see here on my funky little Discord. Please ignore all the messages I haven't checked over on the left hand side. I know that upsets the OCD of you out there. Uh, he'd like to remind people that there is a new set of balance changes coming to the balance mod. Uh, that'll all be there for checking. You know, playing the FAF develop uh, side of things, so uh, they'll need help with that soon. But there's also a new unit coming. How very exciting, and at the same time, slightly terrifying. Uh, I have misgivings about it. Here's a video of it. Uh, I'm going to mute the sound. Sounds like they're using just the hoplite sound. Ew, that sort of sound for the way. It looks a bit hoplite. It looks like a T3 hoplite uh, in a way, but it's, it's actually not... Um, I have it on good authority from Rowie that this is the equivalent of the, the Aeon, uh, what is it? The Absolver, that's it. It's the anti-shield unit. Uh, there it is. Uh, yeah, I have mixed feelings about it. I mean, if you look at it, you, you could imagine a cyber couple with their new baby, and this pops out, and you're like, huh. And then you find out that uh, their milkman is an Aeon, and you're like, oh, okay. It does, just doesn't look cybery. Also, what's going on here? Are they pond skaters, sort of, I suppose? Uh, the, I don't know, the mechanics of that seem strange. But other way, otherwise, fantastic new addition to... Uh, so I've just Somebody's done a lot of work on this, and I've just pooped all over it, so uh, you have my apologies, uh, but yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, and I'm sure it will make an interesting... Uh, addition to the Cybran Arsenal and give them some more options. Anyway, let's go and check out today's game. It's going to be custom for 6v6. It's going down on a generated map, and here it is. And you can see yeah, a little bit of a mess up there as I transition from the display area to the direct game itself. Here it is. Custom 6v6 is going to be a pro-am with an eclectic mix of Joes and pros split straight down the middle. And this is going to be Team 1 up here at the top left. And this is going to be Team 2 down here on the bottom right. So, making our introductions while they get set up. Starting in the top left-hand corner, rearguard air position. It's Kenny Lee, 090. He's going Seraphim in Fecal Brown, opening first land. Uh, next closest two players to him, over here in Pontiff White to begin with, going Cybran. It's Sanoman. He's going first land. And in Dijon Yellow... We've got Thurnis Haley, another Seraphim, going first land. And then the front line people, it's a very much a tri triangular formation for each of the teams here. Uh, starting over here to begin with, it's uh, Gira, or Gira, uh, 89. I'll probably call him Gira today. Going in Spetsnaz Green, going first air. Interesting decision. In the center, holding down the fort for Team 1, it's Pie Guy. Uh, he's going Aeon in Lime Green, opening first land. And last but not least, down here in Combat Green, on the bottom left-hand side, it's Mochilal, another Cybrin. So that makes three Cybrin, two Seraphim, and an Aeon there for Team 1. Checking out Team 2, rearguard air position in this season's fabulous Vivacious Violet. It's Blissful Noob. He's chosen Cybrin today, opening first land. To his left over here in Lime Green, we have Six Solent. He's also going Cybrin, going first air. Team member number three in Burgundy Red. The one, the only, the man, the mystery, the Willow Wispy. There he is. Uh, he's going UEF opening first land. On the front row now in Ferrari Red up here, another Cybrin. It's Rampier, and he's gone first land. In the center on the front line for Team 2. It's the little guy, presumably not related to the little one, but uh, going UEF nonetheless, which I understand was TLO's favorite race of choice. And he is going first land, second land also in Halib Orange Orange, and last but not least down here in Cyanide Cyan, we have Upas, another Cybrin, and he's gone first and second land also. So four Cybrin 
and two UEF there on team two. Game quality is at 92%. That's perfectly acceptable. Who are the players to watch out for today? Well, Willow Wisp, obviously, top rated player in this game at 2100, has had a fantastic record on this channel previously with some of the most exciting plays and uh, endings to the games. Although he's been a bit quiet recently. If we're being honest, he hasn't uh, shown up for us, Guilecast patrons. Uh, of late, but uh, that is just the way of things. Uh, top rated player on Team 1, 1800 Thurnus Haley, so a little bit of a drop off, but that means it will be made up on the underside essentially. Then we've got a, a 1700 and a 1600, that's Kenny and Sanoman. So these are the pros on the back row. I imagine if they've got any sense, they've done a similar situation over here. Yeah, so Blissful Noob, 1700. Handling air and then six Olin over here at 1500. And then all of the Joes stick the cannon fodder on the front line. I see how it is. I know you pros and your games. Uh, what has Map Generator manifested for us today in its infinite wisdom, in its mysteriousness? Uh, well, a decent smattering of mass poop, pretty liberally prescribed across the battlefield in all the usual places around cliff edges and the whatnot we've got these two plateaus nothing on them in any way shape or form however it is pretty darn sparse in terms of mass points in fact it's literally you've got a line running down here apart from one here pretty much one there it is uh barren wasteland down the center choke points potentially in around here between these two plateaus very open battlefield down on this bottom left hand corner the only place to hide would be behind this little rock formation we've got uh, a play from pie guy who's looking to snag the plateau mainly i would imagine for reclaim and tactical reasons there is some rockage to be scoopersoned around the fringes uh, but he doesn't want to commit too much here unless of course he's planning to set up base and throw down artillery shielded artillery and tack missile launchers on this side of things and cause problems for the bases down here but that certainly would be a large investment and he's got to be mobile because he might have to handle dipping into two different theaters depending on whether willow is looking aggressive or not or unless uh, there's more things happening down here on the south side. Speaking of things happening down here, gun upgrade on the way for just about everybody, it would seem. Lots of messages popping up. So actually, Mochila went really early. Look at that. Five minutes, and he's already done. He's already got his gun, and he is ready to go. Moving down there to the southwest, but it looks like pretty much... Everybody else is going gun as well, so expect aggressive play in this one. Potentially lots of early casualties, which we like to see. We are here for death, and may it be prescribed as liberally as possible. Kenny moving up to the front line now to join his teammates. And gun upgrade now at 25% for Sanaman, 44% for Pie Guy. The little guy over here, 74%. Just having a quick look at my levels, making sure the sound is acceptable for you all. Never quite sure. Yeah, it seems like it's up full. Let me know in the comments if it's all coming through okay. The never-ending battle to get... The right EQ sorted for you chaps. <coughs> not really EQ. I'm not adjusting bass and treble. I ain't no DJ. Well, not these days anyway. So Willow, for all of my protestations about his wonderful plays, not that this doesn't mean he won't have any, but he is going defensive, at least for the time being. Going T2 when everybody else has gone for gun. But the first come on com action kicks off in the center. It's between Kenny and the little guy. Kenny unupgraded against the little guy who's got the gun upgrade. 
And he's currently chasing him down with his own comm and some T1 spam with a T1 bomber coming in from his teammates to support. Trying to clean up some of this spam, but Kenny wise to evacuate. In this exchange, he's been pushed down to 4,300 hit points. Fortunately, Sonoman wise to the threat, as is Pie Guy, both bringing their forces to bear on the little guy trying to push him back. The little guy now down to about 8,000 hit points. What's happening down here? Mochilal, of course, went for the early gun upgrade and he's wasted no time. On the rampage, 21 kills achieved for him so far and there goes the first rank in veterancy. Who is faring better on the reclaim so far? Team 1 by a narrow margin. It's 14k scooped so far to 13k. Arguably 15 to 13k now. Now, Six Solon has moved in to support his teammate. They've got a little bit of build capacity here. Just erecting some fortifications so they have a fullback point in case disaster strikes. High guy exchanging with Six Solon. Pretty much everybody down here, with the exception of Kenny, has gun. I wonder if uh, Upas has gun. Yes, he does. Literally everyone went gun. With the exception of Kenny, who didn't go anything at all, and Willow, who went for T2. He's thrown down his fusion reactor up front. If you're new to the game, you might think, well, that's a precarious place to stick your T2P gen. Yes, it is. But it's also the one place where he has access to T2 tech at the moment. So that will get him teched up quicker. I love what he does there. You can see the one slightly off-coloured wall section. He reclaimed a hole in his teammate's wall and then shut the door behind him as he moves out to kill off some of this build capacity. But comms still going at it down here and I zoomed in just at the right time. This could be a double kill. <gasps> Mochilau down to about 100 hit points. Upas on 1,300. Uh, eats himself an artillery shell down to 60 hit points. And currently on the wrong side of this plateau with hostile forces closing in all around. Upas just needs to keep his comm out of danger. And he might be able to bag himself a kill here. There's also a lot going down to the northeast. Pie Guy, Sanoman versus the little guy in Six Solon. Pie Guy currently eating a lot of fire, combined fire from both Six Solon and the little guy. He might be the first one out of this game. Sub 1,000 hit points and hit points tumbling like it's going out of fashion. Down he goes. Mochilau has got himself a second rank in Vet. That's re-established a few hit points, but he's still looking very unhealthy indeed. Back down to 1,000 now as he's chased out of town by this horde of Medusa. And Mantis needs to duck and weave as best he can. Down to 500 now. Cannot afford to eat any of those artillery shells. But look who has registered the opportunity. Six Solon from Team 2. Moving in with his commander. Trying to head Mochilal off. Prevent him from retreating to safety. Mochilal deals with the T1 spam threat. But he's not going to be able to deal with Six Solon. Chasing him down. 600 hit points and climbing, 30 hit point a second regen, but now Six Solid is in range. And that is, as they say, that. Down he goes, and Team 1 have lost two players inside two minutes. That is, shall we say, less than ideal. What's going on over here? Willow, Rampier versus Greer and Thurnis. Willow and Rampier unloading right now on Greer. Greer down to 5,400. Willow and Rampier looking a little bit more healthy, although Rampier on 6,200. Full 3,000 less than Willow. Greer just dipping into the red and now getting surrounded by inbound T1 spam from Rampier. I think he knows he's going to go down here, so he's going for the draw with Rampier. 
bringing his com forward. Doesn't think he's going to escape, and I think he's right. Rampier down to 2,000 hit points. M -m -m multi kill. That was probably the right decision. A man out from each team, but it is now a 3v5 in favour of Team 2. This could have gone a lot better for Team 1. But if you want to see a silver lining, it's all of the Joes, all of the frontline cannon fodder who have died out at the start of this one for Team 1. They've got all of their top players still in. Only problem is, none of the top players from Team 2 have gone down either. Crucially, Willow. As we wait to see what he delivers for us today. And of course, Willow now inheriting an extra base. So he is now twice as dangerous as he was before. Who was that up here? That was Rampier, of course, who went down. Now it'll be up to Thurnis to prevent Willow from breaking through here. <coughs> Thurnis on just shy of 7,000 hit points. Backing up with his commander. Has got a couple of T1 PDs in here, but it's going to take more than that to stop Willow if he decides to force his way in here. Willow, who incidentally has T2 backup now for Rhinos moving up to assist the comp. Now we're getting some nano repair upgrades as players look to replenish their commanders after those opening exchanges. Sano one, Sano man, sorry, pursuing the little guy. The little guy stopping ill-advisedly to assist Six Solons upgrade and repairs. Fortunately. Team 1 don't seem to be pursuing him at the moment, with the exception of this single solitary hoplite unloading its long-range ordnance from relative safety. I suppose he didn't want to uh, yield this position or back up any further, because of course Sixolan is rooted onto the spot until this finishes, unless he cancels it and wastes all of those resources he's currently spent on it. 80% done. Little guy moves to try and shoo away the pests on Team 1 from this area of the map. Needs to be a little bit careful. That's a lot of T2 spam coming in from the north. Thurnis Haley devoting a lot of resources to this. And you know what? It might just pay off. The little guy running out of hit points thick and fast down into the red. Sub 3,000 hit points and plummeting as all of those high alpha strike obsidian tanks move in on the commander and I don't think he's getting out of this there's way too much spam in the area wow comms dropping like flies at the opening to this one that is 15 minutes down and five players down almost half the field gone already team one will be happy with that to claw one back it is now a 4v3 in favour of Team 2. Team 2 who are up about almost 90 mass per tick. 85 mass per tick, something like that. Can't be bothered to look too closely at it. Not while there is more combat underway. Wave of Corsairs. Move in on six solon could he be the next player to go out he has got air superiority fighters covering the skies and there's more air superiority fighters coming in from blissful noob who's handling air for team two six solon on eight thousand hit points three ranks of veterancy Strong move underway here from Sanoman. But Upas and Six Solon ready to hold the line with their commanders. Got a little bit of ground support here from a couple of rhinos. Nothing happening so far at the moment from Willow, who's getting himself 
A T3 upgrade on his commander, 60% done there. Thurnus will be happy he didn't push straight away and threaten this base. Need T2 radar and omni, says Mochilal from beyond the grave. little push here underway from Furnace, who's made the transition to T3 land and has some harbingers in this unit comp. Willow bringing his own T2 spam down to try and cover this position, but not enough firepower in that mix. And as a result, Blissful Noob bringing his commander to bear. He has got gun upgrade, he's got stealth, but there's harbingers in here. He needs to be a little careful. <laughs> oh no! Quick, bring the transport back! It's too late! <laughs> that was perhaps not the best idea. <laughs> Modular. Huh? <laughs> oh dear. And now the game is leveled. Blissful Noob with the woeful play belying his credible and respectable 1700 rating. Dropping his comm. And he only, I mean, there's still two Harbingers left, so he only bagged one, I think. Even if that was even if it was him that killed it off. <coughs> Those were Obbies. Hmm. Oh, Obsidians. Yeah, oh, I see. He didn't realize these were obsidians. He saw the harbingers. Yeah, that's a lot of alpha strike right there, which he didn't allow for. Critical error, which really has let Team 1 back into this. This is a nice scramble, though, from Willow, churning out as many T1 gunships as he could imagine would be possible to defend. But look at that. My god. Comms dropping like flies. Upas going down. And now it is a 2v3 in favour of Team 1. We might just check back in on that at the end. To see what we missed there. So stay tuned for that. Still haven't got the instant replays sorted. A guy did actually contact me for uh, some kind of graphic. Which I could insert into the videos when I want to do that. Apologies, I haven't gotten back to you, sir. We did start our conversation and didn't finish it. I will look you up after this is over. But Willow now making those jesters work for him. Shooing away this little force that just cut a hole in their front line. And killed off Blissful Noob. Certainly is... In bliss now. Sanoman and Six Solon, two Cybran comms, toing and froing. We've got gun upgrade and nano repair over here. Nano repair and stealth, of course, since they're on the same upgrade chain. And exactly the same loadout from Six Solon. So two gunny, stealthy commanders trying to do battle over here. We have got some inflow of bricks on both sides. Can't believe we lost Upas. Literally, that was... So that's... What have we got here? One, two, three, four, five... Five left, so we've had seven comms go down and about the first 20 minutes. It's been an absolute bloodbath. And this is on a map with not that much mass, but this is what happens when everybody goes gun. Everybody's using their comm aggressively. You get a quick, aggressive game. So Willow went for T3. He's been playing it more defensively, more conservatively. He's got gun now. But of course his first upgrades were T2. And I think he went... Well, maybe he went gun then T3. Actually, yeah, I think he had gun down here when he was fighting 
with Rampier just before Rampier and Greer took the, each other out. Or well, you could argue that Greer took them both out with his decision. But he's uh, working on a fatty up here, and we've just had a notification that he's uh, completed a fatty somewhere else. Or not a fatty, sorry. Another experimental. And it's a monkey lord down here in uh, what would have been... Whose base was that? So that was Blissful Noobs. Rampier. I thought Rampier was on the front line. Yeah, yeah. He's just brought down Cybrin Tech down to his main base. Interesting. Didn't want to have that stuff on the front line, I guess, or just expanding his infrastructure. Good, good uh, engineering stations, of course, the Cybrins have, so makes sense. Six Solon bringing his commander to bear against this new threat. We've got a bunch of units loitering here from Sanaman and Thurnus. Combination of hubs and bricks in there. Even a sniper bot sitting under these asylum shield gens. And now we have experimentals in play. Wow, so we've got two monkey lords out for Willow. And a fat boy that's at 8,000 hit points cooked out of 12,500. Let's have a quick look on the eco side of things. Team 2 with a very significant advantage eco-wise. Looking at about 160 mass per tick. And a lot of that is going straight into Willow 2100 rated pockets. About the worst place it could possibly go to if you're on or rooting for Team 1. Stream Scout from here. T1 Factories. Who pass? Directing from beyond the grave as well. Actually like to see players sticking around for two reasons. Always fun to see what they share. Advice-wise, see them concerned about the outcome of the game, but also means the replay is less likely to desync. And if you want to send in a replay, guys, please do feel free. The one thing I do request is that you check for desyncs. It does spoil the atmosphere, so I very rarely include replays that do. That will diminish your chances of getting your replay casted. Would you look at this artillery grid that's going down here in the top corner the top right hand corner ish Willow did not like the look of that and so he attempted an assault an assault that looks like it's possibly going to be repelled maybe or maybe not <laughs> he's on full HP there is no reason for him to back off now and every reason for him to dismantle these Gunthers before they increase in number any further. Massive battery of Cerberus PD queued up over here. In fact, I would just like to go to split screen right now to keep an eye on these two areas. I don't want to miss any more com kills. All of the engineers, the build capacity that were working on those Cerberus turrets have been annihilated. And the last of the Gunthers back here soon to be taken offline also. Does he have anything else ready to stop this? Slowly sending in Corsair fighter bombers. We're getting a little stream of them. If you check your minimap. Coming up from Sanoman. Uh, going to be this chicken, I think, that's going to get the job done. Two experimentals engage one another. The Monkey Lord woefully short on hit points. 
in this exchange. Lovely bit of micro though. Look at that. Oh, almost escapes around the back of him for a little extra damage. But that fat boy was completed. And he's lobbing his ordnance in towards that chicken's direction. Oh, he was initially. Now he's going after some mass points down here. Another fatty under construction over in the Strategic south. Launch detected. And where is that coming from? First nuke of the day out from Team 1. There's the nuke launcher. Ooh, experimental bomber under construction also from Kenny. Haven't actually stopped to take a look at who's faring better on ASF numbers. At the first glance, it looks like it might be Willow on Team 2. You can see Solon comfortably on the move, suggesting to me that this is definitely going to land. No strategic missile defense covering this base. 27 minutes, definitely the part of the game where you should start looking at strategic missile defense. Six Solon needs to be careful here though, there's inbound brick pressure. Down to 100 hit points, 50 hit points, and caught out. Wow. Down he goes. And suddenly, Willow is left all by his lonesome. Let's do that quick ASF count now, because it matters more than ever before. Willow... With 135 air superiority fighters on the field. That is not too shabby. Kenny has 90 by contrast. So a definite air dominant situation for Willow. He is still up on eco also by about 170, 160 mass per tick. That's not to be sniffed at. The one thing that concerns me slightly is... Him getting too spread thin on the ground. Monkey Lord has snuck up on this fat boy. Shield soon to evaporate and he should win this encounter. Although he's not going to have much left if he does. Gets a ranking vet for his trouble but is still in range of these Ravagers which will probably finish him off. There he goes. So an even little exchange down there. Willow really needs to ramp up either defenses down here or ground unit production. Or go mass Soul Ripper gunship since he's probably still got the advantage in the air game. He certainly thinks he does. How is that experimental bomber coming along? That is almost cooked. 43,000 hit points out of 52,000 hit points. Oh, fat boy down in the north. Two inbound chickens advancing. Willow disengaging with his comm, leaving this forward base to its fate. Engine is still working on a fat boy, which will never see operational service. I imagine this, for some inexplicable reason, Thernis decides to back off here. This is his opportunity to wipe this little base out. In comes the Soul Ripper. Now, is this going to provoke an aerial response? An aerial, res aerial response which will possibly hand air superiority or complete air control over to Willow. There is the fighter screen coming in to protect the Soul Ripper. The ground infrastructure for Willow has been obliterated. One of the chickens is going to die for their trouble. Second one moving out now. Uh, this is interesting. Is Willow trying to bait Kenny here? Kenny circling. I uh, didn't like the look of that. Wasn't going to fall for it. How many hit points left on that Ithota? Oh, it's down to about 60% at 43,000. There's the experimental bomber, which I think is going to get blown out of the sky after dropping a single bomb. What's he going for? 
Looks like he's going for this corner base and all of the air production facilities. That's probably the right decision, to be honest. Wow! That did not do the damage I expected. Did that shield blink on in the nick of time? Oh, it's a delayed. Have they changed that now? Bomber shot down off screen. Which is another unfortunate outcome for Willow, who would have liked to have scooped some of that mass. But yeah, is there a delayed damage over time applied to that experimental bomber now? Because that always used to be a much more instant affair. That was a definite delay on the, that damage application. Answers in the comment section below if you have that information. And while you're down there, smash the old like button. For goodness sake, you've been watching for 32 minutes. If you haven't done that already, what the hell's the matter with you? Megalith coming out to defend against a veritable brick wall heading their way. Nice little group of personals looking to potentially cut this group of units off, but they're not falling for it. They're continuing to backtrack, so I think they're going to be safe. Let's do another ASF count. We didn't get the big fight that I thought we were going to, so about 200 for Willow, who's currently power-locked himself, probably trying to sort out the situation after getting his air production facilities annihilated, along with all of his reactors. 124 air superiority fighters on the field for Kenny. And we have got fighters, of course, buzzing around for Sanaman, but they're merely T2 fighter bombers, so we're not going to count those. Ah, look at that. Wasting no time. Reactors almost all replenished. And power situation restoring itself in short order. For newbies, it makes sense to place old structures on top of their wrecked forebears. You get a discount on rebuilding them, essentially you're repairing them rather than building them from scratch. Is that the same Soul Ripper or another one? It's certainly looking pretty healthy. Oh, but it might not for long. Here is the big air battle that we've been waiting for. Initial engage from Kenny is straight for the gunship. And then he tails off. I think this is a mistake. This is a mistake. He had that Soul Ripper down to 26,000 hit points. Now he's going to lose all those fighters anyway. He should have just stayed on the gunship and at least shot that down and got something out of it if he was going to engage. Now Willow has air control and an operational Soul Ripper still with 27,000 hit points, which is now working on that megalith beneath him. And look at this. He's managed to... A mass, two megaliths, and a monkey lord looking to push back out in this top right-hand corner. Bill and Ben here moving into cover. Ben has seen better day. Smoke pouring out of his bottom and not in a good way. Oh, it's his elbow. <laughs> Why does it always go there? It looked like it was coming out of his backside. Megalith massacring build capacity alongside that monkey lord. This is great work here from Willow. That's a lot of bricks though coming in. They can surround this Megalith. Might be able to take this down. There is this group of Percivals to the northeast to worry about. At the moment they're not making a beeline for this horde of bricks which give them a window to finish off the megalith and then potentially engage the the Perseys. Down goes the experimental. That worked out just about as well as it could have for Sanaman. Thirty-six minutes. What are they saying in chat? Scout for experimentals ASAP. Six Solon nuke loaded, he says. 
So, Willow, does he have a nuke? I mean, I'm guessing he's not saying it for his health. He's Presumably there's a nuke in here somewhere. There's soon to be a new bug in play also. Well, it's interesting. He's not rushing to replenish his air factories anytime soon. Or at least he's not doing it there. I imagine that's where he would put them. And there is the Liberator. Not currently loaded. Does have strategic missile defense next to it. That is loaded. Sort of, yeah, I'm concerned for Willow. The longer this goes on, he's got air control. That's fantastic, as we know. That is a large force on the ground. Needs to be Very accurate with his placement of those Percivals. Not let any of those bricks through. That bug at 54,000 hit points complete out of 75k. More experimentals underway. Scout air for SMD. You have nuke, says Six Solon. Does he have nuke? He almost has nuke. Any minute now. I'm amazed he hasn't rushed to Strategic rebuild these facilities. Detected. I suppose he knows he's got a huge aerial advantage right now. And resources are required elsewhere. Another nuke out from Kenny. How deep will that head? If it comes anywhere over here, of course. That SMD will catch it. Don't think it's going to. It looks like it's going to take out his original base over here. So he's was happy just producing aircraft out of those two T3 air facilities. Rather than rushing to rebuild all of these. That might change now. Wondering if he's going to... Is he actually relocating? Oh, he's just relocating all of those units back up there to grab the mass points. That's his first order of business. How is the mass situation looking? Well, for the first time in the game, really, Team 1 have pulled ahead now. It's 1.2k versus 980 after that nuke. But this is an existential problem for Team 1. Two Soul Ripper gunships. But Willow straying a little too close to that clump of bouncers right there. Needs to stay away from those. But he's hugging the edge of the screen, moving up towards Sanaman. Sanaman's comm is just over here. Recognizing the aerial threat. Team 1 are hard at work trying to spam up as many SAM sites as possible to shoot these puppies down. They're heading north. Do they know where the commander is? They took out a ton of engineers but left all of the reactors online. They must be going for the comm. Sanaman takes some hits. No? Is he moving on? He's moving on. He's moving further north. Forget Sanaman, he says. What's he got his eyes on? Oh, he's going after the strategic missile defences. Oh, but there's a new group of ASFs on the field for Team 1. Down goes the nuke launcher for Kenny. Both Solrippers looking very, very unhealthy indeed. They're going to get the SMD. Yes, they are. One Solripper down. The other one on 15,000 hit points. That's going to be blown out of the sky in any second now. Oh, no. How many fighters did he lose in that also? Oh, he's still got 200. He's been replenishing them and adding to them over time. So fighter count, not too bad. He did kill off the fighters that Kenny had just spammed together. Ugh. But look at this. 
two megaliths hunting this horde of Percivals down here, which really is the linchpin of his ground defense. A horde of Corsairs coming in now. What's their target? It's the SMD down here. 41 minutes in this game, and it's balanced on an absolute knife edge. Willow responds, shoots down the Corsairs. But this ground spam is a problem. There is a bug that is almost three quarters done over here. If you can get that off the ground, you'd have a way to hit back at these without getting shot back. There's also a leaky front door in the north. One Soul Ripper is trying to take down three chickens which are bearing down on that northern base. The northern base where Willow Wisp's com is currently residing. He recognizes the threat. He's trying to get out of there but he's hung up on his own engineers. <coughs> oh my word. That northern base is getting totaled. Soul Ripper can't dish out enough damage to kill that off. There's GG's going out from Six Solon already who thinks Willow is done. I'm beginning to think he's right. Pendulum has swung too far in Team 1's direction. Oh no! And this Soul Ripper taking so much fire from all these bouncers. He's still pulling in 980 mass per tick. But he's going to lose these bases down here. That number is going to drop soon. Somehow he's managed to muster enough bugs to stall this attack that's coming through the front door. But he's lost all of the core mass in this base. Willow now down to 750 mass per tick. And it doesn't look like Team 1 are done here. There's still more pain to inflict. ACU here-ish probably, says Blissful Noob. With what? With those Soul Rippers? One... He's got one and a half Soul Rippers, just under, and three comms to kill. I mean, that would be quite something. Looks like he's meandering the over in this direction. Detected. There is the waypoint. He is indeed coming after Thurnus. Team 1's top rated player. There goes his nuke. Just before he loses it. Where is Willow's com? He's over here. He probably wants to start moving up towards the top right hand corner to avoid that threat. Nuke inbound. That's going to get shot down so he's not going to get anything done with that. There's a lot of flak on the ground now. It's not like earlier. Team 1 have recognised the danger. <coughs> Strategic Excuse detected. me. <coughs> what happens when I get a little bit too excited, but I can't help it. We're probably going to lose Thurnus at least. That is a basic T2 shield gen. It's not going to last long. There it goes. Thurnus now absorbing damage, and he hasn't got a lot of tank on that bad boy. Down he goes at 44 minutes. Two comms left. Willow on the move. Lots and lots of experimentals to the south of him, and some coming from the west also. Next target over here, it's Kenny. This time he's got a T3 shield protecting him, but that doesn't last long either. One of the Soul Rippers is about to go down under all this Samphire. There it goes, but Kenny out of hit points. He goes down. 44 minutes. Oh my god, what did he get with him down here? That must have been a nuke. Must have had two saved up over there. I thought for a minute he'd bag Sadaman. He hasn't, but he looks like he's about to. He's got 9,900 hit points left. But there's nothing left to shoot at it. Willow Wisp's comms also taking fire from Corsairs. It's a photo finish. Who's going to get killed first? Willow's got personal shield. Sadaman's got no hit points. Willow's done it again. Can he survive? He's, can it be a tie? It's not a tie. He's done it again. That's insane. That is actually insane. He was completely done. I can't believe he managed to tear his way through three players like that with two Soul Rippers. Somehow, with all of the flak that they were building, all of the Sams, there still wasn't enough 
to shoot down those two Soul Rippers. And they just didn't manage to spam out any fighters to help their situation. Somehow, Willow managed to maintain air control. And <laughs> he, pulled, he pulled a win with 10,000 hit points left on the tank. He has got 9,900 on the shield right there. Very valiant effort by Sanaman to finish him off with those Corsairs at the end. But fantastic outcome. Another classic finish from Willow. And we'll just go and check what happened to Upas a little earlier in the game. So we join this game at 18 minutes 25. Blissful Noobs just committed suicide in the face of Six Solons. Harbinger and Obsidian push. Brought his comm in. It didn't turn out so well. And it really wasn't anything too exotic. Upas just caught well offside with his comm. Look at this. We've even got a, a wave of light assault bots coming in with T1 spam from a couple of factories down here. But we've also got bricks, firepower from Sanaman's comm also bearing down on Upas. He's just completely isolated. And whilst we were looking at God knows what else up there, I guess maybe it was in the top right hand corner we were talking about Willow or something. Upas just runs out of road. Gets royally run over in all of the worst possible fashions and there he goes so yeah down he went at 19 minutes and about 15 seconds there or there about something like it and that was that really and uh soon after it uh six solon went on out did i mention six on for saying that those were his uh Harbingers coming in. If I did, uh, apologies. It was, of course, Thurnus. But this is... People complaining as well in the chat. I'm 100% with you. The colours are really difficult to differentiate sometimes, especially when you're on certain green backdrops and you're zoomed out. There's not a lot of difference between some of these colours, especially if you're an aged, decrepit like I am. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you've seen everything or even if you just want more fresh content, con content coming out in a more timely fashion there is the patreon a mere dollar a month gets you access to a nearly a cast every week it's been a little bit quiet over the last couple of weeks apologies for that that was the uh well easter holidays and whatnot but kids are out of the house now and back to school Woohoo! uh so yeah we should have normal programming resumed which is all uh, all good for everyone do like and subscribe if you haven't done so already guys and next time i will uh, i'll see you around <laughs> that's not my sign out that's not how i finish things off guile until next time stay well and stay safe this is guile signing out